happy day 10 to each and every one of you. Happy Thursday. I pray you were able to fast with us yesterday and just really believe that God's going to move. But listen, if you didn't do it, no worries. God still hears your prayers. And I'm so thankful for that. And we're so excited to come to you each and every day, even though we can't physically be together. I'm so glad that we can socially connect together. And I hope that you're staying connected and engaged with others around you. But don't get too used to this because we're coming back to church. Come on, we miss you guys. And wow, we can't wait just to be back together. But share our posts and, and throw watch parties and just get the word out because here's what I believe. I believe this is going to be the church's finest hour. I believe this is the time that we can see, you know that person you've been talking to over and over again and they seem to have shut you down? It's time right now. Come on, people are more open. People are more receptive. People are looking for something and that something is a someone and his name is Jesus. So come on, let's bring the hope of the world, Jesus, into their world, and we can see a difference. So here we are again, soaping the word of God. We're looking at the scripture first. We're looking at the observation. What is it saying? And then the application. What is it saying to me? How do I need to apply it? And then we're going to pray and say, God, help me to take that, to live that, to be that. So again, in Psalms 91 is what we're studying. We're going to look at verse 7 and 8 today. And this is a good one today. This is a great promise for you today. And it says this, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It's all around you, but not in you. Verse eight, only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. So here's the observation. In ancient Jewish commentaries, they considered these verses, verses 1 or verse, yeah, these verses in Psalms 91 to be descriptive of demonic attacks that were coming upon people. Demonically, um, demonology rather, was a large part of the theology of the time when Christ was here. And while I believe that's true, that we are in a spiritual battle, that this is a spiritual attack, I, as the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And I believe all that. But I think we've got to be careful that we just don't label everything as a demon and as a devil. And let me explain why that is. I believe that when we point the finger at the devil and it's a demonic attack, it negates many times our own personal responsibilities, that we say things like this, well, it's out of my control. It's not something I can control. It's not something I have any power over. Where I believe we do through the name of Jesus, we have great power. And I don't believe that should be our approach and stance to this. Well, it's just a spiritual attack. It's the devil attacking me. Yes, but there's still things that we need to do and responsibilities that we need to regard in each and every one of our lives. So what a promise these verses bring to our lives. But I think it's very important to see where the promise is sent. What do I mean by that? We cannot live like hell and expect the rewards of heaven. We can't just live our lives however we want and say, oh, God's going to bless me. God's going to reward me. God's going to take care of me. Oh, yes, he will. And he desires to. But I believe there's a place of protection that we need to find ourselves in. King Saul, the Bible says, he was anointed as king. It was man's choice, I know. But he was anointed as king. It's said that an evil spirit would come upon him. And why was that? It wasn't because God sent that evil spirit. But it was because Saul chose to rebel and step out of the protection of God. Jonah, the Bible says, found himself in the middle of a storm. Why was that? Because he was running the opposite direction from God. They both weren't in the place of protection that they needed to be. I believe that these verses are a promise that no fear, though I don't have to be afraid of anything, but I've got to be make sure that I don't step out of the protection and the provision of God. Now, I'm not saying because you're having problems or because you're sick is because God's judging you because you've sinned or you. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is this. I believe there's a place of protection and safety that we must choose to live in each day by the decisions and choices that we make. 
Don't get me wrong. I don't believe works produces salvation. You can't earn your salvation. But I do believe this, that works are a byproduct of my salvation, that they are fruit of it. So the way that I live will be different because of the relationship that I have with God. So what's the application today? One word, repentance. Say that with me, repentance. That's a great place to start. It's the beginning. We all need to start there. And repentance means this, to go in the opposite direction, to change direction. We've got to keep short accounts in our life. We've got to consider our ways, the choices and the decisions that we make. And there's good questions to ask yourself. And that is this. If I make this decision or choice, if I say this thing, is that taking me towards God or is that taking me away? Come on, what am I feeding myself? Am I feeding my spirit, my soul, or my flesh? Because these are all key things. Yes, God's promises for provision. Yes, God's promises for healing. Only with our eyes will we see. But it's only when we are dwelling in God. Again, we can't live like hell and expect the rewards of heaven. And I pray today that through just self-evaluation, looking at your life, repentance, that you would look and see those areas and things in your life that maybe you've wandered away. And you've opened yourself up to things that you don't need to be a part of. But it's time to come back to Father's house, to his place of provision and protection. Let me pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today for the protection and provision we have in you. What a promise we have in you. But God, every promise has a premise. God, you said you will when we will. God, you said you will do when we do. And God, I pray that each and every one of us would dwell in you, that we would live in you, that we would choose the right decisions and choices for our lives, that every day, God, we'd find ourselves in you, in your protection, in your provision. And God, I pray for those of us who wander away. And God, we th I thank you, God, that we can so easily come back to Father's house, that God, you are there with open arms to welcome us back. And I pray today, God, if there's areas and things in our life that are not right, that we would make it right. We would not go into tomorrow with God carrying those weights and sins. But God, we would release them. We would surrender them. We would bring them to the foot of the cross today. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. We love you. Stay connected. Be good. God bless. Bye.